guys. Let's take a look at the overhead press. Now, in sports like powerlifting, the bench press has taken over the overhead press to the point where we really don't see it much um, anymore, especially in gyms. Now, the overhead press does have a major advantage as it does really focus on general shoulder health, including the mobility and injury prevention, as it does use the entire shoulder girdle in natural human movement. Where as the bench press, we do notice that it does put a lot more stress here on the front or the anterior part of the shoulder. In addition, it really doesn't require a lot of equipment and you don't need a spotter. Now, the overhead press or the strict press is one of the best upper body strength tests as it does test the whole body. Now, when done correctly and with strict form, it can humble even the greatest egos. So let's take a look at what muscles we will be primarily using throughout the lift. So let's start with the upper body, as these muscles are gonna be more dynamic in nature. The main muscles are gonna include the deltoids, the serratus anterior, trapezius, rhomboids, rotator cuff, the pectoralis major, primarily the clavicular head, the biceps, and the triceps. Now, a really cool aspect of this is the biceps, you know, is typically known as flexing the elbow. However, it also crosses the shoulder here at the top, giving it some assistance with lifting overhead. Now, another cool aspect of the biceps is it is sometimes considered the fifth rotator cuff muscle. And it's known as this because it does help control the head of the humerus in the socket, which we do know is extremely important for overhead movements. Okay, enough geeking out on this. But as far as other muscles involved, but to a lesser extent, we have to include the glutes, the quads, the erector spinae, as well as the forearm muscles. Okay, let's dive right into this. When walking up to the rack for the first time, we wanna position the bar in the rack so it's just above nipple line. This will allow you to safely walk in and out of the rack without hitting the J-hooks. Your hands should go just outside shoulder width apart, and your wrist should be in a slight extension or a neutral grip position. Um, this is sometimes called the power position, where the hands can also be in a false grip, meaning the thumb doesn't have to be wrapped around the barbell. The bar should be at the level of the clavicles, and the elbow should be slightly in front of the barbell. The shoulder blades, we want to remain down and back to increase tension in the middle and the upper back. Now, if we take a look at this from the side, the cervical spine should be tucked or retracted to allow the bar placement to move more vertically without hitting the chin. The thoracic spine should be extended, but the ribs should remain down and not be flared. The lumbar spine should also be in a neutral position where the glutes should be squeezed tight to get your hips underneath the bar and increase that hip extension. From looking from behind, we wanna see the heels roughly about shoulder width apart at a natural toe out angle. Now, after having a solid setup, you do wanna push the bar up while keeping the shoulder blades down to allow the movement to come from the deltoids and begin that upward rotation from the serratus anterior, and we should not see the shoulders elevate, as this would be an indication of premature activation of the upper traps. As the bar path moves upward, you need to retract the chin so you don't hit it on the way up and the elbows should stay tucked together until the bar passes the level of the eyes. Once the bar passes the level of the eyes, you can start to quote unquote untuck the chin and bring it back under the bar. Now this step is really important because if the bar does get too far in front of us, we will end up putting more stress or excess stress on the shoulder. Now, from behind, we should see the scapula upwardly rotate and initiate the movement from the serratus anterior and not shrugging from the shoulders by elevating the upper traps. The lumbar spine should stay neutral and we should see the thoracic spine extend without those ribs flaring. After you complete the lift, the bar should come under volitional control at the top prior to slowly lowering the bar down with control. Now, while in this locked out position, when looking from the side, you should see the bar stacked over the heels where the elbow should be fully locked out and externally rotated in front of you. Now, side note, the rotation actually comes from the shoulders, but it's best to be seen from looking at the elbows. 
You should see the entire spine in a neutral position in the ribs down. It's very common to see someone arch with their lower back to compensate for decreased shoulder mobility or strength. Where there is limited shoulder mobility in the joints or there is muscle length limitations such as in the lats. Now the overhead press or the strict press is one of my personal favorites because it does require both mobility and stability from the majority of the body to execute it properly. Now because of this fact, it does make it a great exercise to test your weaker areas as well as test the areas that maybe you need to spend some more time in on a mobility standpoint. This is a classic example of when the core exercise becomes the rehab exercise. And we can do this by simply modifying the overall load in tempo. And I wanna leave you with one last note is don't neglect the overhead press.